the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. who 
whose hope is in the Lord, their God. Who made heaven and earth, who sees and all that is in them, who keeps promises forever. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captive free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are brought down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and the widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Here God will sign throughout all. The second reading comes from James chapter 2. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here please, or you take notice of the one wearing, who is poor, you say, stand there, or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was evoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, quote, you shall not love your neighbor as yourself, unquote. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law, but fails in one point, has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not commit murder. Now if you do not commit adultery, but if you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be anyone judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will not be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, eat your fill. And yet you do not supply their bodily needs. What is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. Ooh, hard to hear. I invite everybody to stand for the gospel reading as you are in. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre, a land in the north of Israel. He entered into a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. A woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about Jesus, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And Jesus said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Another harsh response. But she answered Jesus, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then Jesus said to her, For saying that you may go, the demon has left your daughter. So she went home 
and found her child lying in bed, the demon gone. When Jesus returned from the region of Tyre, he went by way of Sidon, by towards the Sea of Galilee, in the region of Decapolis. They brought to Jesus a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hands on the deaf man. He just took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers in his ear and spat and touched his tongue, then looked up to heaven. He sighed and said to him, Ephethath, which means be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. The more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He makes even the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. I invite you to be seated. Good morning, everyone. Today's sermon will be on a key phrase from James and the theology of that book. Be doers of the word not merely hearers. In the Old Testament, there are certain books called wisdom literature that are meant to be a teaching tool for how to live life. The educational system in Palestine some 3,000 years ago wasn't a liberal arts style education aimed at critical thinking. It was rote memorization. Back then, education was practical concrete, meant to teach you the basics about life, how to build a house, how to farm, how to discipline children. Education, for the most part, was apprenticeship. You'd watch somebody who knew what they were doing, and you'd repeat them, and they'd let you help until you could do it as well as they could. For those few who received formal education, it looked like memorization. A wise man was able to recite another's time-tested ancient wisdom to recite God's wisdom. So a king would ask an economic question or a political question or a warfare question and the educated wise men around him would recite passages that they've memorized that were supposed to give them advice. The book of James is thought to be this kind of practical wisdom book meant for teaching but in the new testament james is not there trying to answer the grand philosophical questions of life like maybe the gospel of john but just to try to help you get through your day what ties the advice and the wisdom in james together is the suffering and violent context in which the advice was given at the time that James was written, some 20 to 30 years after Jesus, Jewish communities were at odds with Roman authorities, and this would eventually escalate into open warfare. Jewish communities and the Roman authorities blamed Christians for destroying the social fabric because each one needed the one of them against the other. I cannot oppose the Jews as Romans without, with this social uh, dis discontent going on. And we Jews have to stick together to fight the Romans, and you Christians are messing it all up. And as the first generation of Christians were entering their declining years without Jesus, Christians began to fight amongst themselves too, vying for leadership among Gentile Christians versus Jewish Christians. It is in this context of conflict that James writes his letter. James' practical advice for conflict is to find everyday ways to be loving. Not the hostility you may be feeling inside you, rather live out love. Show the love that God put in you. Find love for those in your communities that may be different from you, see things differently from you. And here's the basic advice. Find a way to do something loving toward the person you're most likely to be riled up against. 
James doesn't see himself as bringing anything radically new. He's just telling people to love each other as he understands Jesus would. Jesus, James, James was a practical guy, and Jesus was a practical guy. Jesus fed the hungry, healed the sick. Jesus got that people had everyday needs that needed to be taken care of. And James is just trying to get the people he cared about through some difficult situations. Sounds to me like circumstances all of us can relate to. And wisdom that we could all use. So how do we get through tough times together? The wisdom and compassion and community engagement displayed in the letter from James is the reason why James, the brother of Jesus, was chosen to be the Bishop of Jerusalem. He was asked to be the head of the entire church during times of conflict. Not because he was the smartest, not because he was the most eloquent, but because there was love in his heart. And love in his heart is the kind of leadership that we need in tough times. John Legend is an R&B singer-songwriter who performs one of my favorite songs. It's called Slow Dance. If I were smooth, I'd sing it for you in a deep, soulful voice. If I were smoother, I'd invite Brenda up. Mark isn't here, is he? Okay, I'd invite Brenda up and slow dance with her while singing it. <laughs> but I'm not smooth. I'm a white kid who plays Dungeons and Dragons, so I'm just going to read the lyrics for you. Can we wait just a minute? Slow down for a minute now, baby. You're talking loud, you're wilding out. Don't seem like my old lady. Let's go and play the songs we used to play. We can reignite the flame, because things just ain't the same. We can talk about the baby, we can talk until we're crazy, we can focus on it now, or focus on it later. We can start another fight and argue and fuss all night. <coughs> But I propose that we go to the floor and slow dance. The advice in the song, stepping away from conflict and the big picture worries and just doing something nice, something loving, something pure in its simplicity is the same kind of advice that you get from James. The advice is to embrace your love and slow dance. And essentially, James is trying to tell you to do the same. Step away from the fussing and fighting and do something loving to the person that you're a little uh, perturbed. The Lutheran Church is not very fond of the book of James. No more uh, certain passages in it be doers of the word, not merely hearers. Faith without works is dead. Martin Luther didn't like that one. He said that James missed the whole point of Jesus. Jesus is here for salvation. Works in this life are, uh, you know, extra. And despite Luther's misgivings about the book of James, many Christians, including myself, have a very James-like faith. I feel closest to God and strengthened for life in this world by everyday acts of love and grace and kindness and compassion. The kind that James was promoting. I feel love in me when you love me, and I get to love you, and I get to, to the end of the day, tired from having served my neighbor, exhausted yet invigorated to do it again the next day. This may be works righteousness according to some Lutherans, but it is also me, and I think that it's many of you too. My faith is nurtured and kept alive by everyday acts of love, those that I have the privilege of doing and those that aren't done for me. I have a James-like faith at my spiritual core of service, and I think a lot of you have a James-like faith too. I've seen this congregation again and again and again rise up with acts of love when they see another in need, a cause in the community needing attention. You are doers of the word and not merely hearers, as James asked Christians to be. 
Together, there are opportunities to love our community from service projects to engaging our youth on Wednesday nights. I need another teacher. <laughs> to acts of kindness that go unapplauded, that all of you do, that nobody sees, and I hear about after the fact all the time for a neighbor somewhere around him. I think a little James wisdom for how we get through tough times together has served this congregation well from COVID. And it will continue to serve whatever comes next, whatever ups and downs we come across, stepping away from the big questions and the worries and just trying to do something loving. Find a small, kind way to help another person. And I think you'll find it gets a little easier in the big tough times of this world. A little more joyful in the big tough times of this world. For those who have a James-like faith, like me, the importance of a Lutheran preaching the word of grace, that it's not about us and all that we do, and I know it's essential. Eternal salvation is not built up on good deeds, but your neighbor's well-being for today can be impacted. And I think your well-being for today can be impacted by acts of kindness. So even though it might sound a little weird, the advice is to don't sweat the big stuff. Because God's got it. And focus on the small stuff. The small everyday acts of love that add up in our community and make it better. Be doers of the word and not merely hearers through service. This is what keeps a community healthy, church or winter set. But never lose that firm grip that you are saved by grace, by the love of God. And even and especially in the times when we just don't have it in us to do all the small stuff that it takes to make everything better. Hold on to the faith that it was never about that. And just let yourself be free from the pressure. And just do a little kindness. May you be blessed hearing this sermon as I've been blessed for you. Amen. We continue with our song for the day.
we continue our worship confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's grace. We pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those of our world. We pray to you, Lord God, for this community, the nation, and the world. For all the work of justice, freedom, and peace. We pray to you, Lord God, for the just and the proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, and justice and oppression. We pray to you, Lord God, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who are sick, all the We pray to you, Lord God, for the peace and the unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. We pray to you, Lord God, for Elizabeth Eaton, our presiding bishop, Amy Current, our bishop, and for this congregation's ministers, staff, and the land. We pray to you, Lord God, for President Biden, Governor Reynolds, and our nearby leaders in Winterset, from school administration, hospital, board, and chamber, to Mayor Phil McCumber, Police Chief Burke, Sheriff Barnes, Supervisors Clifton, Fitch, and Stansel. We pray for the special needs and concerns of our own congregation. What prayers do the people of God have? Pray for the those who are contracting the Delta variant. Protect them so that their symptoms are mild. Be with our short-staffed hospitals, clinics, and medical facilities. And pray for the people of Afghanistan. Protect those who couldn't make it out and those who could, as they all rebuild new lives and new environments. Let them find compassionate neighbors in these tough times. We pray for those facing the struggle of recovering after Hurricane Ida. And we pray for those who take on the task of helping others recover. On this Labor Day weekend, we thank you for those who have worked tirelessly so that others may have just employment and greater economic opportunities. We thank you for those who have advocated for child labor laws, the weekend, the 40-hour work week, retirement benefits, and anti-harassment laws. We pray to you for those who struggle to make what they need to support themselves and their loved ones. I place into your love and care, O oh God, Darlene, Gov, Travis, John, Casey, Tim, Dick, and Jim. With open hearts and minds, it is into your loving care that we commend all for whom we pray whether allowed in the silence of our hearts, trusting in the power of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the Holy Spirit who imbues creation with your healing touch. In the name of Christ, we confess together. We have failed to walk with humility and gentleness. We have been careless with your creation, our neighbors, and ourselves. We have squandered the gifts of your love and grace. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
forgive us our sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the promise of God and the command that he gives, all your prayers have been heard and your sins forgiven. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite our ushers to bring the offering up at this time.
fill you. Amen. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Thank you for coming.